world's most famous serial killer, Mr. Iman Hashmi. He has recognized versatile talent in him, so I can understand if he discovered the universe inside him. There is this young guy, 21 year old Bilal Siddiqui. At his age, people chase skirts, look after girls, but this man is writing books after books. I am really envious of him. His first book was a fiction, and second is a non fiction. Imagine the kind of career graph that he has. So, if even he was discovering the world inside him or you know it's inside him, I can still imagine he's 21. But please, here we are talking about a four year old child, Ayan. <laughs> and actually, six. How could you go wrong with that? Thank you. The book is about him where he is discovering his own self, what is discovering the vast universe inside him, and not just him, but the maturity and wisdom of a four-year-old, sorry, six now, yeah, six now, <laughs> at that time you were four, that how he was hand-holding his parents. You three, I was three So three-year-old is helping his parents, and now he's six. To learn the deeper meanings of life and how Imran himself had so many places said that he gathered so much from his own child, the way he was maturing, the way he was handling first he, the, the very difficult traumatic surgery and then after that chemotherapy, sessions of chemotherapy and the, how he was losing his hair. But the way he handled everything so bravely and so courageously is something that we all should take a leaf from and learn in life. In fact, the last chapter of the book is so fascinating that I have read it thrice so far and every time I read it I feel like crying. <laughs> it's about three and a half year old who has come through, <laughs> gone through so much in life and still he wants to participate in a race against the wishes of his father. Imran has been a hero. You have seen him beating up so many baddies in the movies. And you have seen him as a brave man in the movies. But even he could not face that how his young son decides to race, take part in the race. And he ran throughout, despite he falling at least thrice in that race. But the way this boy finished the race and then he showed a thumbs up sign to his father is something which will bring your heart to your throat. You must read this book for the reason of seeing the real life courage of a father and a son. And how we all, of course, see so much of Christ in our life. But I'm saying that when we see these stories, when we see these real life stories of a father and son going through it, you will understand that yes, there are people who go through this and they still survive and turn out far braver than what they were earlier. So when I went to Imran once about two and a half years ago and asked him to write the book, he was very reluctant. He was not sure. So after that, when he agreed to write the book and when he discussed all those unknown facets of his life, you will find that those are very interesting and the book is so unput down. I thought about writing the book. Imran. Well, first of all, thank you everyone for coming here this evening. Thank you so much. Um, I want to start by thanking a few people. Without them, this book wouldn't have been possible. Uh, first of all, Mr. Hussain Zeri, uh, the man who relentlessly pushed me uh, week after week, month after month, after I came back from Canada where he was being treated. And I remember what Hussain told me. He said that, you know, you've been through this as parents, um, this information that you've had, but you've got on your side. If one family, if one parent, if one child fighting cancer can have this information on his or her side, it would be battle one for all of them and for you. And also Bilal, um, you know, my partner in crime, I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Uh, he really pushed me, uh, dig down into those painful memories uh, back in 2014 in January and, and document them in this book. Uh, so thank you, Bilal. And also Millie, uh, the entire team at Penguin, um, it wouldn't have been possible without them. They've really given the book the kind of exposure uh, that it needed to get across uh, to all, to everyone uh, in the hour of need. And also, I think next month there will be a Hindi version and a Marathi version uh, that will be launched. So looking forward to that. So let me just take you back through the incident um, two years back and tell you exactly how the book eventually happened. 
It was uh, January the 13th, uh, 2014, when uh, as a family our life was completely uh, wrecked. Um, it was a, a casual brunch that me, my wife and my son had gone for uh, to Taj Land's End. And it was there where we detected some uh, abnormal symptoms in our son. And uh, we rushed into the hospital. There was his head pediatrician there and the uh, tests began. Uh, you know, there was a conversation that we had two weeks back. We didn't want, uh, we were delaying a simple blood test for the hemoglobin um, because we didn't want our child to go through physical trauma when a needle went into his arm. And here in this hospital, there was needle after needle jabbed into his arm uh, and doctors trying to get to the bottom of the problem. Anyways, the nightmarish of a day ended. We went back home and I went onto the internet um, to do my own research and I typed out his symptoms and what I was confronted with uh, on one website uh, really tore my heart apart. It said uh, the dreaded C word. And below that, there were a list of other diseases. And I remember going to sleep that night. Before that, I prayed to God and I said that, please don't let this be cancer. Please don't let this be cancer. But next day, uh, our worst fears manifested. Uh, his chest x-ray and his uh, blood test were normal. But in his sonography, there was uh, a tumor the size of a season ball that was growing on top of his left kidney. And um, I remember seeing it on the sonography machine, this dark gray haze. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, that's a Wilms tumor. It's a very rare case of kidney cancer that happens to a minuscule percentage of kids um, of all, all pediatric cancers, roughly around 2 to 3 percent. And he happened to be a part of that unfortunate percentage of kids. If you've had someone close to you being diagnosed with this disease, you know what the next couple of weeks, months, and possibly years are like. You're hearing things like staging, pathology, chemotherapy, remission, um, radiation. And it was very frightening for us back then because we didn't know the staging of the cancer. Uh, and even these cancers are divided into two uh, subgroups, which is uh, favorable and unfavorable. Uh, God forbid a child has unfavorable, the chemotherapy does not work. Um, but God was, I guess, very kind in the next week after the surgery, we realized it was a favorable cancer. And we as parents and family, we fought, we fought hard for seven months. We took him to Toronto for his uh, treatment, uh, chemotherapy. And through this entire phase, and this is how the book actually started, somewhere it started uh, seeding in my mind, that there was this fear in me. And there's a fear that in most of the cancer patients and parents, um, the fear that when the chemotherapy is being administered, uh, you feel the job is being done and something is fighting the disease. But what happens once that stops? Uh, doctors and oncologists didn't give me the right answer. They didn't give me the answer I wanted to hear. Uh, they told me that, you know, take the chemotherapy, fingers crossed it won't come back. Because there is recurrence in cancer, there is a five year survival rate. Uh, so I started doing my own research. Turned out, uh, some great information which was going to help us out was that uh, roughly 90% of cancers were lifestyle related and uh, a small percentage of cancers were genetic, which means that we could have fought this, we can fight it, and there are a lot of things that come into play. There is, um, obviously lifestyle is what when you come to cancers, when you come to uh, terms with why cancer happens. The air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, the stress levels, all of this contributes to an abnormality in the body. And we put Ayan on a very, very good diet. He's probably the only six-year-old who has a vegetable smoothie. I can't have it. So he, he really, uh, I guess, worked his way himself uh, to cure himself of this disease. And, um, you know, it just, it's, statistically they say that roughly by 2030, there will be four and five people who will have cancer. And that's a very alarming rate for our country. Uh, that means probably everyone in this room, at some point of time, with our given diets and lifestyle, are candidates to get this disease. So I felt once Hussein came to me and Bilal came to me and they said that, you know, you have to get this information out to people. And if it touches one life and gets the information to them, it will be uh, a great accomplishment. And this is not just for cancer patients. This is for people for prevention. Because even we as a family felt that this could never happen to us. Cancer is something that happens to someone else. But I have news for you. It comes knocking on your door without a warning. 
and sometimes it gets very late. So I would, I would advise everyone to go out and read this book. We have uh, put the last three chapters, which uh, are about what you can eat and what you can avoid uh, to reduce your probability of getting this disease. Something that oncologists will not tell you. Uh, I have nothing against them. They have saved my son's life because his chemotherapy was given to him. But uh, the fact is that food does not come into their domain. It cannot be patented. So th that's why pharma companies never say, if you have curcumin, for example, it can help you fight heart disease and cancer. So all these things have been documented in this book. So I hope everyone gets to read it. And um, yeah, over to Bilal. Thank you for giving me the chance to write this book for you. I think, uh, thank you all for coming. I think exactly or slightly over a year ago, at this very place, uh, we had launched my book and exactly the three people. Today we have a little addition and that's Ayan because of because of whom this book is possible. I think uh, Ayan serves as an inspiration to 